So let's talk about drugs. We have to, because uh, pleasure-inducing drugs are the heart of the hypothetical that the authors are suggesting here in terms of solving it. Uh, let's talk about drugs that make us feel really good. Just hypothetical. Beginning of the second section, bottom of page 218. Imagine that you are in some hospital to test a drug, very conveniently testing drugs that induce intense pleasure for an hour followed by amnesia. You awaken and ask the nurse about your situation. She says that either you tried the drug yesterday and had an hour of pleasure, or you will try the drug tomorrow and will have an hour of pleasure. While she checks on your status, it is clear that you prefer to have the pleasure tomorrow. Why? There is a te temporal asymmetry in our attitudes to experienced goods, which is parallel to the asymmetry in our attitudes to experienced bads. We are indifferent to past pleasures and look forward to future pleasures. And you can see then how they are changing the original Parfit scenario. Um, whereas he dealt with uh, experienced bads, they are um, dealing with uh, experienced goods. So the notion is that we would rather have, we would prefer to have an hour of pleasure in the future rather than to have an hour of pleasure in the past. And then they suggest in the next paragraph on 219, perhaps it is this temporal asymmetry in our attitudes towards certain goods and not the asymmetry in our attitudes towards bads, which explains our asymmetric attitudes toward prenatal and postivist non-existence. We are working under this general scenario that they're borrowing from, from Nagel, and perhaps it's not a really original idea, in Nagel, but, but they're citing it all that. Uh, if, if we are thinking about uh, death being a bad, it has to be a bad in terms of uh, a bad of deprivation, not a bad something inherently feels bad or experiences bad in itself, but rather something is bad because it deprives us of certain goods, and what they're doing is focusing on those goods, rather than this, the, the focusing on the, the deprivation, goods in the past, goods in the future. And here is, in a nutshell, their, their solution to the asymmetry problem, is that we are at a point in time where we're alive. We can, we can think about the, the past, and we can think about the future. And we can at least imagine that the our, our past, in some way, the past involved this prenatal non-existence, which was a deprivation to some extent of goods that we would otherwise have experienced. And we can imagine our uh, posthumous non-existence, which will be a time in which we are deprived of experienced goods. The asymmetry problem is that we tend to treat these things asymmetrically. We don't care about uh, prenatal non-existence. We do care about posthumous non-existence, and they have given us a, they have sort of validated our preferences in this way as rational by saying that it's just within our sort of temporal nature to be indifferent towards past pleasures and not be indifferent towards future pleasures. So it's one more step to say then we would be indifferent towards the deprivation of past pleasures, the bads of deprivation, but not indifferent towards future deprivation, bads of future So if we were deprived of uh, uh, goods during the period before we were born, uh, we don't care because the, the pleasures that, that we would have been given otherwise would have been in the past. We don't care about past pleasures. But the pleasures, uh, the goods that we will be deprived of, excuse me, uh, noise there, the, the goods that we will be deprived of because of death, because of our ensuing posthumous non-existence, are goods that we do care about. So insofar as we, it is rational for us to care about future goods uh, and not care about past goods, it is fully rational then to uh, shun death insofar as it deprives us of future goods that we care about, as opposed to our indifference towards past goods 
deprivation of which we don't care. And they end with this uh, so-called fanciful example on page 219, which illustrates the present point. It is now 1985, and you will live 80 years in any case. Suppose you are given the following choice. Either you were born in 1915 and will die in 1995, or you were born in 1925 and will die in 2005. In each case, we will suppose your life contains the same amount of pleasure and pain distributed evenly through time. It is quite clear that you would prefer the second option, that is to have been uh, born later and die later, uh, rather than the first option, which is that you would have been born earlier and, and die earlier, even though your life would be 80 years in any case and it would contain the same exact amount of pleasures and goods. Uh, it really you know, it depends upon where you want that experiential blank to be. Do you want that experiential blank uh, to fall in the past or to fall in the future, that experiential blank then signifying deprivation, a period of deprivation of goods. Of course you would want it in the past, they say, rather than the future. So if that's true, I mean, that is, if we fully rational to look forward to and care about future goods, but to be indifferent towards uh, past goods, then it would seem that we are rational in assigning different values to the deprivation. Uh, in each case, and that's their proposed solution to the asymmetry problem. 